Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with baked churro bites. That's right, if they look like churros and smell like churros and taste like churros, even if they've been baked, they're still churros. And trying to convince someone that something that's usually deep fried is just as good baked is normally a fool's errand. But what I will say is these are very close and easier and way less messy. And if you enjoy real actual churros, then I think you're going to love these. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with this very simple dough. And that'll begin by adding some sliced up butter to a saucepan, followed by some nice cold fresh water. And then we'll also need a nice big pinch of salt as well as some brown sugar. And if you're keeping score at home, I'm using light, but the dark one will work just fine. And then what we'll do is turn our heat on to medium, and we will impatiently wait for that butter to melt and for this to come to a simmer. And to make that take longer, we're gonna stand here and stare at it, which always works. But there's another reason, and that is because once this does start to simmer, we don't wanna wait before we add our flour. Because if we do, water will evaporate and throw off our proportions. So we are going to stand there watching the whole time. And once our butter is pretty much all melted and the water is starting to simmer, we'll go ahead and dump in our flour all at once. And then we'll grab a wooden spoon or something similar. And we will cook this stirring over medium until it all comes together into a ball of dough. And a starchy film appears on the bottom of the pan. And in a lot of recipes, they tell you when you do reach this stage, where you have a ball of dough and a film at the bottom, that you can turn off the heat because you're done. But I don't think so. What I like to do is keep cooking and stirring for another couple minutes, just to dry things out a little more and cook that starch a little further. And if you do that, you'll actually see that film at the bottom of the pan sort of deglazes and will kind of get mixed back into the dough. And by the way, if that doesn't happen, don't feel bad. It's still gonna work out beautifully. But anyway, the point is once it comes together, cook it for another minute or two, just to be safe. And then what we'll do once that's been accomplished is go ahead and transfer this into a bowl where we will let that cool down for about five or 10 minutes so it's not too, too hot when we add our eggs. Oh, and I should mention, if you just wanna leave it in the saucepan and do all your mix in there, that's fine. I'm just using a bowl because it's easier to mix in and fill them in. And then once that has cooled down a little bit, we can toss in our vanilla extract, the pure and the real, followed by two large eggs, which we will mix in one at a time. And to do that, I'm gonna use a spatula and we'll use a combination of stirring and smearing. And if this is the first time you've ever made this type of dough, you're gonna think something's gone tragically wrong, but it hasn't, right? Watery things and fatty things don't like to mix, but eventually if we keep at it, they will. So do not under any circumstances get discouraged. Just keep mixing and mashing, smearing and smashing, until finally, eventually, it comes together like this, at which point we can add the second egg and basically repeat that same process until we formed a very smooth, very soft, extremely sticky dough. And that's it. Once our eggs have been mixed in and our dough looks like this, we can go ahead and transfer that into a pastry bag, ideally one with a star tip, so we can get that signature churro look. And yes, if you place your bag in a glass, it will stand up nice and straight while you fill it. And if you don't have a pastry bag, also known as a piping bag, we could just transfer this into a plastic bag and cut off the corner. But we're just not going to get those nice sharp ridges, which not only make these look like churros, but also those edges are going to kind of crisp up in the oven. So if you can, try to use the bag with the star tip. Speaking of which, once that's filled, we'll start piping these on a Silpat line baking sheet. And I'm going to make mine about three to four inches long. And because this dough is so sticky, once we finish piping, we'll use the back of a knife to push through the dough so we're able to pull the tip away without wrecking the shape. And if you're using a sharp knife like me, make sure you're using the back so you don't slice into your silpat. And even though I'm making mine straight and bite-sized, that doesn't mean you have to. I mean, you are, after all, the hero of your churro. And if you want to make yours longer or shorter, or you want to pipe a circle like a donut, or make a heart shape or a rosette, that's totally up to you. The entire procedure should work out the same. And then once we have those piped, if we want to do some cleanup and fine tuning on any of the jagged edges, we can do that by dipping our finger in some water, which will prevent that dough from sticking. And I have absolutely no idea why I'm showing you this. 
since the next person that complains about a jagged edge on a homemade churro will be the first. But for future reference, I guess it's good to know that wet fingers will not stick to this type of dough. And then very important before we bake these, I'm gonna spray the tops with some vegetable oil and that's gonna help these brown up and maybe make those edges a little crispier. And then following the oil, we will also spray the tray with water. Okay, our pipe dough and the pan, which is gonna create steam and help the rise and hopefully also improve the outside texture. And that's it once those have been oiled and spritzed. They're ready to transfer into the center of a 425 degree oven for about 25 minutes. At which point I don't like to take them out of the oven. Okay, what I like to do is turn off the oven and then open the door to let out the heat. And then after about 10 seconds, I'll crack the door like this and I'll just let those sit in there for about 10 minutes, which I think helps dry them out. It makes those brown edges a little crisper, and there's also less chance that once we move these into the cooler air, of them shrinking and collapsing and losing their beautiful, perfect shape. Oh, and while we're waiting, we can go ahead and mix up our cinnamon sugar, which involves adding some white sugar to a bag, along with a very generous spoon of cinnamon, and then the secret ingredient, a little pinch of salt. And we'll go ahead and give that a quick mix and or shake. And then we'll set that aside until we need it. And that's it, we can go ahead and grab our churros, which are looking very nice at this point. But hang on, they're about to look much, much better. Because what we're gonna do is brush these with butter, and then we'll finish by tossing them in our cinnamon sugar. And I like to do about five or six at a time. And when you do real churros, as soon as they come out of the deep fryer, they are immediately tossed in the cinnamon sugar mixture, which sticks on very well. But with this baked version, there's just not enough fat on the outside, which is why we need to brush them with some butter. And what I find so interesting is that these will go into the bag kind of golden colored. And by the time we've given those the old, old shaka shaka, and then pulled them out of the bag and piled them up on a plate, they will have completely transformed in appearance to a much darker golden brown. And they actually sort of kind of look like the deep fried ones. Oh, and by the way, Make sure there's a small cup or ramekin on the plate you pile these on, since to enjoy these in all their glory, we're going to want to dip them in an extra thick, Spanish-style hot chocolate that obviously is going to have the top garnish with cayenne. And yes, of course I'm going to show you how to make that in an upcoming video. Why would I not show you that? But anyway, back to our baked churro bites, which are now ready to pick up and dunk in that chocolate. And that, my friends, really was amazing. And no, of course the exterior is not as crispy as if we'd fried them, but the texture on the inside and the taste are virtually identical. And if you use a star tip and follow all those other instructions, they do actually retain a certain amount of crispiness. All right, not a lot, but for a fast, easy, less messy version, enough. And if you're able to eat these a little bit warm, great. But if you can, I find these still very wonderful at room temp, especially if we're going to dip them in steaming hot, Spanish-style hot chocolate. Oh, and some cooks will do an extra step where once these are baked, they'll pop them under the broiler for like a minute to really crisp up those ridges. But if you do that, please note, they will burn very, very fast. And if they do, you will be very, very sad. And you'll wish you were just eating them like this. But anyway, that's it. My take on baked churro bites. They're not the same, but they're very, very similar. And when you factor in how easy these are and how much less messy, I might say I prefer this version over the classic deep fried one. So maybe we'll wait until we're out and we're at some place that does the deep fried ones really well. But when we're home, maybe we'll do this version. Okay, that seems like a reasonable compromise. But anyway, I do love how these come out, which is why I really do hope you give them a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.